So the other day I was using the saw I got from my neighbor to, I'm using this to work on the head and the arm. Since I'm up on a ladder, um, it's easier to hold a lighter saw, but more so you can maneuver around much better because the body's much shorter. The other saw, the problem I was having was the angles just weren't working out that I could get the spots I needed. I'm well aware of the fact that top handle mounted bars, uh, saws like this, are not ideal or even recommended for chainsaw carving. Um, they're, they're designed to be up in a tree and cut down limbs. I'm not really chainsaw carving with this. I'm just kind of trimming off parts of the bear. So I think I should be fine. Um, this was bogging down a lot when I used it last and I got a tachometer and made some adjustments to the carburetor. So I'm hoping it works a little bit nicer today, but I won't really know until I get up on the ladder and start making cuts if those little adjustments kind of help this out. I haven't worked on this bear in a few days except for this one side I added a bunch of those pieces of wood to shore it up. So in general I'm fairly happy with the form of this. Um, where I'm at right now is it's just a little stocky. It kind of just needs to be slimmed out a little bit. I feel like in general the way I've been carving this is almost like the bear is a blocks of cheese and my chainsaw is one of those cheese slicers and I've been kind of taking these small slivers off. Um, I feel like the more adept you get at chainsaw carving, you can make bolder strokes and really knock out bigger chunks. But in general, I'm kind of playing it safe and just kind of taking more slivers out than bigger chunks. Like I said, overall, I'm happy with the basic shape. Um, I had one kind of large screw up way back when I first started and I've been avoiding it and now I've come to the point where I have to address it and that is the hip line and the reason it kind of got messed up was because originally this arm was going to be on the left hand side and it wouldn't have mattered as much because you could see on that side it doesn't look as bad but when I switched them I never readjusted my lines so now the belly of this bear kind of resembles more of like a teddy bear or a gummy bear versus an actual bear. Their legs are similar to ours. You could see the line I should have versus the one I kind of have right here. Um, so instead of kind of having this round oval protruding stomach, the line should actually be where I put that gray one. Their legs come up high and wrap around just like our hips would. So I kind of have this weird line on this side especially see that in this photo where the hip comes up and the belly is one piece that kind of rests on top of the legs, not a circle cut out like this. One of the problems with these pictures, and it's kind of a little too late for it, is there's a huge difference between the bear's body pre and post hibernation. Obviously they're going to be much skinnier photos of the bears when they wake up in the springtime and much chunkier photos of them before they hibernate and I do have some discrepancies in form because of that. So if you do want to do something like this it's kind of important. I probably should have picked my original stock photos a little bit better to um, and decide on what body type I wanted because the skinnier bears do look quite different than like especially this one. The form's really hidden underneath all of that excess fat. As I have been going at this in slivers, I do think I have enough material left to fix this. I'm going to go in and make this arch on either side so I have a 
a solid line to work off of and then try and blend these two forms together because they should be one piece and you could see this the side wouldn't be that thick so I think if I really kind of jut this over and around that hip the legs are still thicker than they should be too I might be able to kind of save that if I can't this form does not bother me you could still tell it's a bear it doesn't look terrible but I would like to kind of work this a little better. I spent a fair amount of time yesterday kind of reforming the arch of that leg and trying to form this together. I took a fair amount off the side and I'm probably going to come in even further kind of taking this off and it's starting to look, I even took like um, some curves out where the armpit is, it's starting to look much 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 better. Um, I don't think I'm going to be completely able to form this into one line. That line's going to be there. But that is not that huge of a deal because just like on us, you naturally have a separation between your abs and your obliques on the side of your body. And with the arm raised, that um, transition's more apparent. You could even see it in the photos. It's a little hard to see. But the side here is on a different plane than the stomach. Even on this one, you could kind of tell in the corner it's the same thing. So I think that fix is going to work. I opened up my other shop door so I could start addressing the back. And by addressing the back, I mean I'm kind of using like a mullet philosophy on the back where it's just going to be kind of untamed and natural. I'm not going to be um, forming it like the front and I'm probably not even going to be putting detail work on the back. This is one of those rare circumstances where not doing the back is actually what I want versus trying to convince yourself that you can leave it raw because no one will see it. Um, I like the ideal of being able to see how I pieced it together and unless I have this door open and you're in my shop you really can't see the back anyways. Some shadows because I'm pointing this into the sun but with this door open I can now kind of do this side a little better. It's just really hard to get this side with that door closed. I just couldn't get the angle on the saw. So I'm going to be trimming up this side just to about where the curve is and then the back I'm going to be leaving almost like that. These parts that are really jutting out I'm going to trim and maybe taper everything so water doesn't sit on any of the wood. But down here you can see it's pretty much flat. And once all that's said and done I'm probably going to sink a 4x4 four four in the corner here and then these are just temporary braces. I'll have a 4x4 four four in the corner and I could put straight edges to that 4x4 four four and really sure this whole thing up. I've been talking about my problem with the hardware in here pretty much since the beginning and 
lately my blades just will not hold an edge the teeth on my on my um chain so i should have picked up on this earlier but i replaced my 5 30 seconds file with a new one um, i hand file these and it's really cutting into that chain quite well now i don't think this one's super super dull but I think it's dull enough that a new one works much better on the chain that's been hit with hardware. So by changing this out, I'm kind of moving, making much, much faster progress. In order to get to the head, I've been using that mini scaffolding, but it's just about a foot too short to really be face to face with the head and get behind it. So I kind of set up this scaffolding with two ladders and two two by sixes. It's super sturdy. I feel safe up there and it just makes life easier because working on a ladder is not terrible. You're just constantly having to move it because the ladder gets in the way of the positioning of the saw. So at least with this, it's freestanding. So my goal today is I have my 16 inch bar with a sharpened chain on it and I'm gonna finish roughing out the head. And then if I have time, I'd like to get the sculpting bar on there and get to the point where it's almost ready for detail carving. So hands down my biggest bonehead move of the year so far. Um, I fixed the oiler on this. There was a tube that was disconnected from the pump. I think that I'm going to show that in the video. And I had to take, in order to get the engine out of this carcass, you pretty much have to take off the flywheel and the clutch. And in my haste to get it working and using it on my bear, I completely skipped over properly um, ratcheting the flywheel back into place. And within five minutes of using this, I sheared off the flywheel key. And it's just a huge bummer. It was a huge stupid mistake. This saw is, um, they don't make these anymore. This one's actually from 2004, which makes it 14 years old. So this flywheel on eBay, the cheapest one I could find was at least $40. A new part from a parts distributor is, I think, like 100 bucks. So that is not going to happen. So I kind of scoured YouTube. There's a bunch of people that, um, I even have a book on two-stroke engines that tell you you can do this, that if you sand out um, where the key used to be and use some key stock and form it to fit your shaft and the flywheel, that will work. Now, the, using the key sets up the ignition timing for your engine. So the, really the only purpose of it, it's not like it holds this in place, is just so that the magnets get lined up so that when the magnets hit your ignition coil, your piston's at top dead center where the timing should be. So as long as I could get this to fit on there snugly and really ratchet it down, I think I should be okay. It's definitely the first step I'm going to be taking for this instead of buying a new part. I happen to have this eighth inch key sock is a little bit big for what I have but I can grind it down a little bit and I happen to have this I use these for my table saw for setting the blade at perfect height so I had this um, in my shop already so I'm probably just going to form it still connected to here because it will be easier to clamp it down and once it fits nicely I'll cut it off and start uh, filing out this as well so I didn't do any filming of actually um, sanding out this notch for the new key and that's just because since it's so small it would have just been my head mostly in the way but I don't know if you could see it on the video but I was lucky with this there was two little notches marked in this which the key sits in between so I just made sure to stay in between those two notches and I should be fine so I also ended up cutting out that little piece of key stock and you could see I started fitting it to the the crank in the saw and it tapers a little bit but you can see when I put it in here that it fits in there perfectly 
there's a little bit sticking out and I could sand that down at the end and hopefully it shows up on the camera but the indent for on the saw is kind of like a teardrop shape it tapers up as well as it's not as deep at the top it doesn't go super deep so I think what I'm going to do to get it to fit in here nicely because I think it's a little thick the one I have now is I'm going to hot glue I'm going to try and just put a dab of hot glue in here to attach this so I could um, see how well it fits and then sand it down and then once I get it to fit I might JB weld this in here but for right now I don't want it permanently in there so I could take it out and keep sanding it. So the hot glue didn't work and I was kind of was hoping it would work but I wasn't necessarily expecting it to work and that's because all these parts are super greasy and it's metal. Hot glue doesn't work great on metal but um I was able to tilt the saw on its side and kind of slide this on there. You can see when I spin the flywheel now my shaft is turning, whereas before with that key sheared, the shaft wouldn't turn, which is a great sign. Um, I think it's not uh, seated all the way down on the tapered end. It kind of rocks a little bit. And the hard part about this one is, is since it's not, since the key doesn't go through the whole thing, it's hard to tell which part is sticking out. But I'm just going to have to take this off and either t permanently glue that on here and then sand it till it, s it seats properly or kind of sand it as is now. There's a little bit of an edge sticking out and try and get it to seat properly. But so far I think that this is going to work. So I wasn't able to get any sort of glue or anything on here but I filed down the part of that key that hits the shaft and it doesn't really rock at all anymore and it still turns so I think I'm gonna be pretty good I'm probably gonna put a little bit of JB weld on that key to put it on the flywheel just so it's not always popping on and off if I ever have to disassemble this again and then I might fine-tune fit it but it seems like it's pretty good And when I take it off the key, you could kind of see the key stayed in that spot, which means it's rotating with it. And the way that I fit this was I marked the top of it with black Sharpie so I knew which side went into the flywheel because that side's flat. You could see on the shaft kind of that it curves. So I just kept putting this in and out of there until it fit seems to be fitting pretty well. And it just sits in there perfectly. So I'm going to glue this in and hope for the best. And um, like I said, I didn't film a lot of making it because this is the finished key. The top front of it is tapered because of the shaft on the saw as well as rounded over. But the bottom side's pretty flat. So not only do they not make these flywheels a lot with removable keys anymore, they used to make them with removable keys, which was great. If you sheared it, you could just hammer the key out and put a new one in. But they make it so that the shape is pretty, pretty complicated for something this small as well. So I'm going to take my spark plug out. Well, I'm gonna, my spark plug's already out. I'm going to stop up my piston and ratchet this down um, better than I did last time and see if I can get this to fire up. 